are all coming. Goodness. Angel herself is in the house. <laughs> There's no gun in that purse, right? Uh, well, no, no, no. <laughs> There might be some scissors from Schizoid. Scissors from Schizoid. There you go. So, Donald Wilkes was in a number of fine films and is still working. And, um, what's that? Yeah, I mean, I didn't say Well, you that. just, what's that? I, I, I didn't say anything, but... And, um, now we are here to discuss the life and times of Donald Wilkes. <laughs> the legend herself in the house. So how did you first become interested in acting? Well, actually, you know, it's like, oh God, when I was about four, my mother put me into uh, a theater group, and uh, it was actually a hobby, something I did on the weekends. You know, we did ballet, jazz, tap, voice, all those things, and it uh, it was a big theater group, uh, but Judy Garland had gone there, and Shirley Temple, and all that, but I thought of it as a something I did on the weekends, you know, never thought of being an actress, really. I wanted to be a ballerina and marry a cowboy. That's what I really wanted to do. <laughs> and um, so uh, I fell upon a couple of commercials when I was a kid. I was super kid, kid on these kids commercials with tennis shoes. You guys will not remember this, but we used to be able to put our tennis shoes on and then jump from roof to roof and, you know, do all kinds of things. And uh, and uh, I would do plays, you know, back in New York and in L.A. And uh, then I, I went out of the business at about at 11. And I just became a normal kid and went to school. And then when I turned 17, well, actually, no. Uh, how it really happened was uh, I went to the Dominican Republic to go to my last year of high school. And uh, my mother's from the Dominican Republic. And they were filming Godfather Part Two there, the Cuban sequences. And um, I would pretty much do anything to get out of school. So they were advertising that they needed extras and, and American-looking people to play tourists and stuff. So I took my cousins with me because I have family there, of course. And, uh, and uh, we all went to go uh, audition for Francis Ford Coppola. And uh, I ended up being his interpreter, because I speak fluent Spanish. And uh, that's kind of how um, I kind of got the bug back, you know, um, from experiencing, you know, filming that, that big film. I mean, Lee Strasberg was in it, uh, Al Pacino and all that, and uh, it was pretty exciting. So when I got back to the States, uh, I said, well, you know, I think uh, that's what I'm going to do. And so I was about 17, and I started looking into it, and that's pretty much what happened. And now your first feature role was in Jaws 2, is that right? Well, no. <laughs> Actually, uh, wow, I did a movie for Motown uh, that Barry Gordy produced. It was for Universal, and it was called Almost Summer. And uh, that was actually my first job that got me my side card. And uh, all his daughters were in it, and see Didi Khan, uh, Tim Matheson, a few other stars that I, I can't recall their names right now. Um, and I had a little role in that. And then after that, I did a small movie with Keenan Wynn called Midnight Rider. And that's a really obscure film, but it was one of my favorite films to do. And uh, I played a, a real tomboy in that, and, uh, and I blossomed to this young girl and all that. And so, anyway, uh, yeah, those were my two first films, actually. Um, what more can you tell us about Midnight Rider? Midnight Rider. Uh, well, uh, we filmed it up in the Topanga Canyon in California. Uh, it was, uh, I did a lot, of, most of my scenes were with Keenan Wynn. Uh, he was incredible. Uh, you know, he played my grandpa, and uh, I mean, he was just such an icon. I was just, you know, uh, so privileged to, uh, to be working with him. And, and uh, he, uh, I think he and, I uh, uh, forget the other, 
motorcycle rider. They used to hang out together. Yeah, they're pretty wild in their younger days. And uh, we had scenes where uh, he would have me a thing of Jack Daniels and say, here, have a cup of courage, kid. And I'm like, oh, okay, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, but um, he, was, he was really interesting. And, and it was a fun shoot. It was, you know, uh, I got to roll around in the dirt and not really worry about, you know, my makeup and what I look like. And um, so it was a lot of fun. Now, when you got the role in Jaws 2, was it daunting making a movie that you knew was going to get a very, very wide release? I mean, you knew while that movie was being shot, good, bad, or however it would turn out, that it was going to be seen by a whole lot of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was... I mean, all of us, all the kids that were cast in that film had a lot of pressure because, you know, because the first film was the highest grossing film since Gone with the Wind. And then Jaws 2, at that time, it had a uh, budget of 30 million, which was unheard of back then. I mean, unheard of. And uh, they had gone all over the United States to look for actors for our roles. And you know, there was a lot of pressure on, on, on us. We were young, and, and uh, yeah, it was pretty daunting. It was, and exciting. You know, very exciting. You know. Do you have any stories from the set? <laughs> Not that I can tell. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was, uh, we filmed it in Florida, in the Gulf uh, of Florida, and uh, Gulf Coast of Florida, and uh, it was supposed to be up in Martha's Vineyard, but uh, because of the weather, they actually brought Martha's Vineyard down to Florida. They, they built the whole town down there, and uh, there's a lot of stories. I mean, there was a lot of drama. There's a lot of relationships. Uh, Susan Ford, which uh, was the uh, president's daughter at the time, was our photographer, so that was exciting. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of fans, you know, because of the first. I mean, a lot of the fans would pay the hotel front desk to let them into our rooms. And we come in after work and there would be someone saying, we want to be your slave. And we go, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to slave. Yeah. We didn't know what to do. I mean, it was a whole different thing. So that was kind of, uh, yeah, we didn't know what to do about that. Um, and, and then there was, uh, you know, there's some sad stuff that happened. I mean, uh, you know, the, the mechanical shark, you know, they had it do more and than did the first one. and. And it broke down a lot, and, and uh, one of our uh, our crew it was going to uh, crash into our camera boat, and uh, he wanted to, you know, he tried to pry himself in between the camera boat and the shark, and he ended up becoming crippled. And I know it was really sad. He was a great guy, but um, and you know, a couple of us almost drowned. Uh, let's see, um, can't think of much else but it was pretty exciting you know it, it was really an exciting time you know for us kids and um after jaws 2 was your next feature of fry was that your next feature fire fire yeah it's f y r e right right um after jaws 2 actually i really thought i'd never work again because i just you know that's i just kind of have low self-esteem at times and I thought, oh my God, this is going to be so terrible. I'm never going to work again. And I had a friend that uh, actually did Rocky after that, but um, he or was it after or just before? I can't. Remember. Rocky when was, was right. Rocky was 76. Okay, so it was before that, yeah. And uh, he had a bet with someone that he could do a film for a certain amount of money, and uh, so he got all his friends together, and uh, so we did this yeah, film, Fire. And what is fire about? I don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of a wacky movie. Yeah, it was, I don't know. Um, all I know is that he starred his wife in it. Yeah. Was your next feature Hard Knocks? Is that what you did after that? Which one's Hard Knocks? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> you're credited as being in it, I don't know. Um, Hard Knocks. That might have been Midnight Rider. Okay. That the name. Okay. No, that was before. And then um, shortly after that, somewhere in there was Schizoid. Yeah. Which was recently 
released on DVD and Blu-ray. There's an mm-hmm. on-camera interview in it, which is what, what was it like playing Klaus Kinski's daughter? It was really interesting. I mean, um, Klaus Kinski was a, a real character, uh, to say the least, and he really liked to get reaction from people. You know, uh, so he would do things on purpose just to freak you out. You know, and uh, I'm a pretty even-tempered person, you know, and, and uh, I kind of already knew this about him. I was pretty mature at that age. And uh, so he would tell me stories that, you know, I mean, inside I was dying, but I wouldn't show any reaction to, you know. And uh, and we had, actually, we had a, a very good, you know, friendship on that film. Uh, he was staying very close to where I lived, so a lot of times I would drive him home because we would uh, we would do most of our scenes together and uh, but he was something else and, yeah. I mean he was someone who had a reputation besides Werner Herzog not too many directors worked with him repeatedly because um, you know, I know that we had the director of the film Crawl Space at this convention recently and he um, didn't get along with Klaus Kinski very well. Do you think he just was acting out to get a rise out of people or do you think he um, you know, is actually hard to get along with you know what? I you know I didn't see that he was hard to get along with with the uh, uh, with the director at all. Uh, he you know he had some uh, issues with the English language, and, and we had to help him out with that with uh, in certain scenes and dialogue. But um, as far as with women, yeah, he always did something. You know, the the female crew did not like him at all. You know, he was, he was pinching their butts all the time. They were like pretty pissed. You know. Um, and he had a reputation for being pretty out there sexually. I think he wrote a book that was even banned in France or something. Yeah. <laughs> and now uh, you, um, you told the story recently. Um, you had a mishap in that film when you had to stab somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Craig Lawson, poor guy. Um, what happened was at the uh, very end when, uh, I'm supposed to be uh, stabbing uh, the killer. Um, there's a we have a pad, you know, for where the scissors are going to hit. And the scissors are supposed to be dull, but I don't know what scissors we use. But Craig was a very emotional actor, and he, you know, and we had we told him, we said, you got to stay kind of still because she's got to hit that pad. The pad wasn't that, and it was a pretty rough scene, and. I missed the pad, uh, and I, I wasn't sure that I had missed it, and he kept going, like, acting, and I'm like, cut, guys, I think I missed the pad, and I really did stab him. I'm like, oh, my God. He was really cool about it, though. I didn't really go in that day. <laughs> the ambulance came, they showed him. Well, Schizoid's a great movie. It holds up very well. If anyone here hasn't seen it, it's on a double feature with Hospital Massacre, also known as X-Ray. Great, great flick as well, starring Barbie Benton. Um, after Schizoid, was your next movie, the TV movie, Born to be Sold? Was that what you did? Yeah, I probably did, yeah. Somewhere in there? Uh-huh. And what is that about? What is Born to be Sold? Born to be Sold was about a, uh, uh, a black market babies. They, uh, it was an adoption agency that was supporting young girls on welfare that were pregnant and they were approaching them saying, you know, we would uh, give you all this money while you're pregnant if you give up your baby. And then they would sell the babies to uh, rich couples for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, and that was actually a true story uh, that had happened. And uh, uh, also it was called Baby Brokers. And uh, it was a, a kind of an unfortunate situation because... You know, they would really mistreat the girls. They ended up mistreating the girls. And a lot of the girls uh, were on drugs. And, you know, that wasn't cool. The babies wouldn't, you know, come out right. And, uh, but that's what that was about. And then uh, Linda Carter played a social worker uh, that was trying to uh, break this uh, this ring of crooks. And then... Um Another very wasteland movie you were in was Blood Song. Was that before Angel? I think Blood Song. No, I was think it after. Oh. Yeah, we might have been before, right before. 
No, I think no. it might have. Uh, it was before you're right, yeah. What well, can you tell us about the Blood Song shoot? Blood Song shoot, uh, we did that up in Oregon. Uh, and when um, I heard that Frankie Avalon was playing the killer, I thought, wow, I used to watch him in Beach Blanket Bingo. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine him, you know. But I wasn't going to say anything because the Mafia backed this movie. You know, I mean, it was like, when you, when you went into these interviews, it was all these and them guys from Hoboken, New Jersey. I mean, you did not want to, you know, you didn't say a word. And then a lot of guys from Godfather 2 actually were in it or producing it, you know. So, um, but it was great, and he did a great job. Oh, my God, he, he was excellent. I was so, I was, I was very impressed. And uh, it was fun, you know. I got to gain a bunch of weight because they wanted me to be really, and I was a cripple, I think, in that. So I have a gimp, and... Uh, I just sat in my room drinking beer and eating uh, candy bars, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, it was fun. And um, the movie we're about to screen, Angel, it has to be one of the most wackadoodle B-movie hits of the 80s. And it had such legs. I mean, it was a big hit. Um, it was a decent hit theatrically, and then it did very well on video and on cable. It was uh, perennial. I mean, it was on for years and years on cable. Um, and... So Angel, you know, looking back on it, um, it's a little bit, it, it's a wild, wild movie. I think it was ahead of its time in some ways. Some of what might seem homophobic today probably was uh, not intended that way at that time, I don't think. Mm -hmm. But um, how did you get cast in Angel? What was the process of you getting cast in it? Um, well, at the time, I was doing a soap opera, uh, Days of Our Lives. And kind of your regular way of getting cast, your agent calls you, Tells you you have an audition, and uh, and I auditioned uh, for the casting director, and she called me back to audition for the director and Sandy Howard, and uh, and that's pretty much uh, how I got the part. Your normal way of was it a um, was it a wild shoot? I mean, there's a pretty wacky cast. Um, was it was it a wild shoot? It was a great shoot. It really was because you know we all worked so hard together. Um, I mean, everybody. I mean, Dick Sean, Susan Tyrell, Rory Calhoun. I mean, you know. I mean, just all pros. You know. I mean, and nobody was a prima donna. We all just you know did our best, and we knew you know it was a small budget film. It took us 21 days to shoot, um, and the director was just. I love Bob Vincent O'Neill, um, and it was just a. Uh, what was your question? <laughs> no, just well, just um, you know, was it a wild shoot? How was the shoot? That's all. Yeah, it could, it was a wild shoot because a lot of times we didn't have like uh, permits to do what we were doing. So I'm running through Hollywood Boulevard with a 45, and there's a tourist looking at me, and I'm thinking I'm going to get you know some of these who think they're a hero, and they're going to. You know, sure. shoot me, <laughs> and, and uh, um, and, but uh, it, it was uh, yeah, it, it was pretty. It was a wild shit, yeah. Well, Hollywood Boulevard, especially in those days, was pretty wild. Sure, it was like the closest West Coast equivalent to Forty Second Street. Oh yes, you know, um, oh yes, yeah. Close. Um, it's a very physical role. Did you do some of your own stunt work? I did all my stunt stuff work, but that's what And, um, and so, stunt person. how, um, <laughs> well, there's credited stunt people on it, but you can yeah, tell that you're doing, yeah, you can tell you're doing most of your own, most of your yeah, own stunt work. What, what have I done that we've done, throw myself off of? Well, I mean, just the, like, the final chase scenes, etc. Oh, that's They're pretty me. physical, yeah. That's yeah. Me. Um, how choreographed was that? I mean, were you, um, pretty well trained? Pretty well planned out scenes. Oh well, they were telling me where I had to go, and I pretty much I had to, you know. I mean, I had to get through crowds that, that um, were planned, you know. So they they uh, they were choreographed, but also uh, we had to kind of you know uh, give and take for the real people that didn't know what was going on, which was kind of great. You know, it lent a little uh, reality to it. And one of the cool things is usually in movies. When people fire a gun, you don't get a very realistic um, recoil. But they had you, you know, as someone would actually be firing a, a large gun. Did um, did you get firearms training? Um, did you just? I had I had fired a gun before. I, I had a friend that was uh, into target shooting, um, 
and I kind of knew, you know, how much of a recoil there was, especially on a big gun like that. So, I mean, there was like half loads or quarter loads or whatever they have on them, but I gave it a little more because I knew it would be more, you know, so, yeah. Was there um, talk of you appearing in the sequel? I mean, it's the same director, but you were replaced with Betsy Russell. Correct, yeah. Yeah, there was, and they, and they sent me the script, and, and I read it, and at the time after Angel, I went all over Europe. I went all over the United States for a publicity tour, and then I went all over Europe for three months. And that was fantastic. Um, and uh, but it was at a time that I really should have stayed in LA to get a pilot. It was pilot season, but but you know we, we really uh, you know for the love of, of uh, Bob Vincent O'Neill and, and getting this movie together, um, I did it. And then when I was offered the sequel, I, I honestly I was offered the exact same money. And I and I thought you know really you know I just had six months of my life promoting this. And then what it was was they said, well, we're offering you double, but actually the, um, the schedule was double the time. So it really wasn't double, you know what I mean? So ours took four weeks, so it was taking eight weeks. So I'm like, okay, do the math. <laughs> and, like, and then, you know, at the time, I, I was probably stupid for not doing it. But at the time, I was young, and I thought, you know, I don't want to be, nobody wanted to be pinned <coughs> to a certain character, which now is great, you know. If I look back, I probably... I would have done it differently, but um, yeah, that was that was really the reason. And um, were you recognized out and about? I mean, the movie played so widely and had so much cable play. Did you ever have people walk up to you on the street? I always love to hear those stories. Were you ever recognized as Angel anywhere you went back then? Oh yeah, yeah. And um, there's actually there's a cute little story. One time I was in Westwood, and there was I, I was parking in a parking lot. And I, I can't remember exactly what street it was, but there was a group of kids, I mean, pretty young, not really young, but younger, and uh, they were chasing me. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, I know that I would get back to my and one of the other Wasteland movies, Wasteland-ish movies that you were in was Grotesque with Linda Blair. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, how was working with Linda Blair? It was great. Um, Linda is, you know, extremely smart. Um, I think she should become a director. She should be a really good director. Uh, we had a really good time, you know. We played best friends. and We were up in Big Bear, snowed in, you know. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot to do, so we... We got to, you know, talk a lot. We have similar backgrounds, you know, so it was nice, yeah. And what have you been working on recently? Um, there's a movie I just did called My Stepbrother's a Vampire. I think my or something like that. And Dee Wallace actually plays, uh, who actually showed as the voice of the cat, I think, something like that. <coughs> yeah, and um, I play an occult shop owner who is kind of, uh, you know, just out for the money selling these kids uh, uh, potions and stuff to get rid of this vampire. Cool. So it's kind of a comedy. Any questions for Donna Wilkes before we go into Angel? In back? Yeah, I was wondering what the truth behind the controversy on Oh, the truth. What was the controversy? <laughs> oh. Um, no, it's not that I didn't get along with uh, McLean Stevenson. Um, we just didn't, I mean, there was no chemistry, really. I mean, he was pretty much, uh, he didn't, I mean, there was nothing to get along with. I mean, it was like, we did not get along, we didn't get, you know, get along, you know. Um, we were the kids, and he was the star, you know. Um, it, it wasn't that, it was more my rebellion at that age, you know, uh, I wanted to be a rock star at the time, and I uh, went to the president of Norman Lear, letting them know that I wanted to be a rock star, and I wasn't used to it because I was a little rebellious at the time, um, I, I was under contract to Norman Lear, and those were one of the old studios that actually told you who to date, how you had to look in public, I mean, it was just, they owned you. And I just had had kind of enough of it, you know. Um, and I just, you know, I thought, well, and it wasn't going so good anyway, Hello Larry. So I thought, well, you know what, maybe I should just. And I had been singing with some uh, groups, 
uh, in Hollywood, the Troubadour and things like that, and I thought that was a pretty cool lifestyle. I mean, really, you know, I don't sing, but, um, I, yeah, so, I, pretty much I said I wanted to leave. But it didn't have to do with, I mean, I think that if we had a leading man that we had had really good chemistry with, because there were like, we, we had actually a, a screen tested with about a, a, a thousand leading men from all over the world actually um, for that role. And there were a, a, quite a few of them that were really good that we really wanted to work with. And McLean was kind of uh, just popped onto the scene because he had left MASH and Freddie Silverman had promised him his own show. So that's why he left MASH, he wanted to have his own show. And I guess this was his show. And that's where they put him in. So um, we weren't really prepared for that. You know, we were really looking for somebody that would be a dad. I mean, that you know, we were, because we had been on the show for a lot longer than him. We had another dad. Well, Cliff Norman played the beat, the first dad, actually. So. Another question before we get to the yes? uh, What was it like working on The Incredible Hulk? Oh, it was great. Great. Both Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno were were really nice. I mean, Lou Ferrigno is such a sweetheart. Um, Bill Bixby, a total professional, very nice. Um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun, you know. Uh, it was fun playing a, uh, a, a teenage alcoholic. You know, at the time, um, I had no idea that I had a drinking problem. You know, I don't drink anymore, but it was really interesting that I thought I was such a great actress, you know. And uh, later on in years, I realized that I had a drinking problem and I quit drinking. And I look back on that show and I go, wow. Here I thought, you know, that wasn't that far of a reach. <laughs> so it was fun. Very cool. We have to start the movie in just a second. Do we have a final question for Donna Wilkes? Um, in Blood Song, what was it like working with uh, Richard Jekyll that played your father? Oh, he was a great guy. Real sweetheart. Real sweetheart. So down to earth. Just a really nice guy. Well, Donna Wilkes will be at her table the rest of the day today and tomorrow as well. Yep. And definitely stop by and speak with her. She has a lot of other great stories. So she has a lot of cool merch at her table, too. <laughs> she has a lot of great stuff from Jaws 2 trading cards on down. So. Definitely stop by and check it out. And um, have fun tonight at Wasteland number 24, 13th anniversary show. And remember, what happens at Wasteland stays at Wasteland. Okay. <laughs>